when we create charts in Excel, that chart data source has to be in a specific layout. Well, can we create that layout from Power Query and create an automated process? You bet we can, and that's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. Recently in our Excel Training Academy, we had a masterclass by the charting wizard, John Peltier, and he showed us the best way to lay out data to work with a chart. Well, following this, one of our members asked this question. I'm trying to use what John was teaching in the charting masterclass for stacked legends. Is there any way to get that layout out of Power Query or Power Pivot or Data Model or another method? So to answer that question, let's take a deeper dive at how we can create chart data using Power Query. Let's begin by thinking about what the ideal shape is for chart data. John in his masterclass called this the TLC method, the top left cell. So let's take a look in Excel. You can see here that we have some data. In the top, we have our series names in the first row. In the columns, we have our category labels, and then we have our values in the main body. In the top left, we have the item called TLC, so top left cell. What that means is that if we select everything starting with that top left cell, and then click insert, and now let's create a chart. Let's go for a stacked column chart. That is now the ideal format for us to work with inside Excel. Now, this top left cell method has another version, and that is TLC+. And we use this if we want to create a multi-level axis label. So instead of just having the month name, we now have the quarter numbers and also the years. Now, the important thing about this method is that these values here are actually blank. So there's nothing in these cells at all. And now when we select all of those cells and go to insert and create that same chart, you'll notice at the bottom that we now have a multi-level axis label. So instead of just saying the month, we now have 2023, which is broken into Q3 and Q4, and we then have the months inside those quarters. So this is a really nice layout and a really good way to categorize data so it's easy for our readers to understand. So the question is, can we get this TLC and this TLC plus method using Power Query. Here in Excel, you can see the data that we are using. So it's a table called chart data, and it has a date, a region, a size, and a value column. And at the bottom, we also have some additional data, and we'll be using that to demonstrate how we refresh the data set. But first of all, let's load this into Power Query, and then we can start making our transformations. So to load this into Power Query, I'll select inside the data set, go to data, and then click from table slash range. That's loaded everything into Power Query. Now let's start by making our transformations. I've got my date column, which is currently a date time data type. So let's change that to a date data type and we will replace that current step. Next, I want to change this date column to an end of month date. So I'll select that, go to the transform ribbon from date. I can go to month and then end of month. Now I want to add a column that shows the three letters for each of those months. So I'll go to add column, date, come down to month and select month name or name of month. That's given me the full month name. I only want three letters. So let's select that, go to transform and then extract and extract the first three characters. Okay, now let's get our data into the correct level of granularity. So I'm going to select the date, the month name, and the region columns. Then from the transform ribbon, I can click group by. In the group by dialog box, I'm going to call my new column name total value. I'll use a sum operation, and the column that I want to use is my value column. Then I'll click OK. Right, it's now time to pivot on our region column because we want the region across the top. So I'll select the region column and then from the transform ribbon, I'll click pivot column. In there, it asks us what values we want to use and our values are in our total value column. 
and then I'll click OK. So we now have our month name, North, South and Central along the top. Let's just make sure that our data is definitely in the right order. So I'll select the date column and then from home, I'll sort A to Z. We can then select that column and press delete. OK, our data should now be in the right format. So let's close and load this into Excel. But before we do that, let's just call this example one. OK, now let's click close and load. That's now loaded the data into Excel. So let's select all of our table, go to the insert ribbon, and now let's create the same chart as before. So a stacked column chart. And perfect, so we now have our chart data created from Power Query. Now let's move on and look at the TLC plus method because this adds some additional complexity that we really need to think about. In this section, we will be using a Power Query custom function. It sounds advanced, but you don't need to worry because I've already written all the code for you. All you need to do is to copy and paste. So head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash power query chart data to copy that code. Here we are in the blog post. Let's now scroll down. And here you can see the sample of code that we need. So this custom function is called FX repeat value to null. All you need to do is to select this section of code and then press control C to copy. Now let's head back into Excel and reload Power Query. I'm going to right click, go to new query and create a new blank query, which is in the other sources section. In that query, I'll go to the advanced editor, press control A to select everything, delete to clear it, and then control V to paste that code. I'll then click done. And now let's give this custom function our name. So FX repeat values to null. Right, we've now got our custom function ready and we're going to use that in a few moments time. For the TLC plus method, we had a column for year and also a column for quarter. So let's go and add that into our query. To start with, I'm going to take example one and I'm going to duplicate that query and now I'll call that example two. Right, now let's come to our steps. And after we've extracted the first characters, we want to insert a new step. We want to add a quarter column. So I'll select my date column and then from the add column ribbon, I can go to date and then quarter. And then we have quarter of year and we will insert that step. So we've got a new column called quarter. Let's add a Q on the front of that. So with that column selected, from the transform ribbon, we can go to format and then add a prefix. We'll insert that step and the prefix we want is the letter Q. Q and then click OK. Right, the last column we want to add is a year column. So I'll click on the date column, then go to add column, go to date, year and then year. And then I'll insert that step. We now have all the columns that we need. I'm going to come to my grouped rows step and then add these new columns into that list. So we had date, let's now add year, and let's also add quarter. Okay, that's given us all the data that we need. Then we can pivot, sort rows, and remove our column. So we now have year, quarter and month name and then our regions across the top. However, this isn't yet in the TLC plus layout because we have these repeated values. Now Power Query has a transformation that enables us to fill down so that it replaces any null values, but it doesn't allow us to fill up or unfill to create null values. And that's what our custom function is for. So let's use this custom function. I'll click on the FX icon to create a new step. And our custom function is called FX repeat values to null. The first argument we need is the table name. 
Then the second argument we need is the column names list. This is the list of column names that we want to replace repeat values with null values. This is a list, so it needs to be in curly brackets. And our first column is called year. Then our second column is called quarter. We'll close the bracket at the end of that, commit that function. And you can see that we now have null values below 2023 and also null values below 2024. And we have a similar treatment in the quarter column. So we're ready. Let's go home, close and load and get that into Excel. So now in Excel, I can select all of that table, click insert, and let's create that same stacked column chart. And you can see there at the bottom that yes, we do have those multi-level labels. Now, what happens if we update the data? So from the data tab, I've got the Q2 data from 2024. I'm going to drag that up into our data set. Let's take a look at our example two tab, click data and then refresh all. Look at that, not only do we get our nested labels, but we've also added a new column into our data set. So we have this new category called East and you can see that that has appeared inside our data. So our table has expanded to include not just the new data points, but also the new categories. And that's it. That's how we can create chart data directly from Power Query. We've leveraged three main features. Firstly, that Power Query loads data into a table. Secondly, that tables expand when there's new data. And thirdly, that when we connect a chart to a table, that that chart also expands when new data is added. And it doesn't matter if we're using the TLC or the TLC plus method using Power Query, we can achieve this. And we did this by using a custom function. Now, if you'd like to use more Power Query custom functions so that you can perform those advanced techniques, then why not head over to our Excel Training Academy where we have an entire library of custom functions that you can use in Power Query. So go to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.